You are now listening to The Spearsy Spin with your host, Mike Spears. Hi, folks, and welcome to The Spearsy Spin. Lots of stuff going on out there, but today I wanted to do a commentary on what I think is developing here in the United States. And what I mean by that is, is the United States going into civil war or are we already in an undeclared civil conflict? The United States is no stranger to war. I mean, throughout history, we've proven to be a superior fighting machine, you know, even when the odds seemed against us. But what about the war within our own borders? And by that I mean the war within ourselves and against each other. By today's standards, we are already at civil unrest and are experiencing possibly precursors to to civil uprising on a national scale here in the country. Currently, the Republican-controlled House and Senate, well, they should be mirroring mirroring the needs and ideals of our elected president, Donald Trump. However, there is extreme discourse between the governing powers and that of the president. Uh, this divide only, not only furthers the unrest within the public psyche in both the Democratic and Republican parties. Because the, the Democrats and far-left liberals have become well, fixated on resistance to, well, what President Trump is trying to put forward in the administration and his proposed policies and agendas, they, along with other malcontents, have taken their grievances to the streets of our country. And, you know, we've seen standoff, uh, standoffs, rather, excuse me, between, you know, Trump supporters uh, and those who pro- protest the new POTUS. Now, in Portland, Oregon, and Los Angeles, more than 225 people have been arrested. And these arrests appear to be more than just disillusionment within political alignments. In New York City, demonstrations have caused police to erect barricades. And at one place, they had to place sand-filled trucks in front of Trump Tower. Kind of crazy, right? The protests continue, and a changing ideology appears to be forming, in my opinion, um, because there are those who have said that a vast majority of the protesters slash rioters are, in fact, on the payroll of one George Soros. Now, if true, the multi-billionaire would be responsible for most of the chaos and damages to date. Also, Mr. Soros would be at odds to explain his paid protesters' actions that included highway blockades, angry chants of not my president, and those egregious actions of protesters throwing glass bottles at police officers. Meanwhile, recently in Miami, tons of demonstrators have clogged the MacArthur Causeway, stopping traffic. Now, the insanity doesn't stop there. Uh, There was a horrible beating of a 49-year-old. His name was David Wilcox, who was brutally attacked and beaten by a group of young men and women in Chicago. While they're beating the crap out of this guy, the group yelled things such as, You voted for Trump! Not sure if that's how they said it. I'm guessing not. But during the campaign, though, um... President Obama himself had discredited um, you know, Donald Trump and described him as unfit for the presidency. So that kind of set a lot of folks in motion because 50% of the United States obviously leans toward the Democrats and the other 50% toward the Republicans. Now, it was really unusual to see Portland's demonstration where approximately 4,300 demonstrators crowded the streets, attacking drivers, vandalizing buildings, and destroying most things that got in their path. And it's 
It's not just in the streets or on the beaches. The internet has become a gambit of pro-Trump followers and disenfranchised objectors. Now, while the two opposing sides can't actually hurt each other, you know, at least through the keyboard, there's no question that the hate and anguish from both sides is reaching a fevered pitch, with many claiming that Trump is not my president. Well, here we go. Take me out to the ball game. Well, not really, but baseball bats seem to be the popular tool of offensive action in Seattle to Philadelphia, Richmond, Atlanta, Dallas, Omaha, and Kansas City. They use them to beat this, bat that, crash the windows out, and so on. Now, Baltimore enjoyed block streets and all kinds of disruptions during its latest protest, with many people actually hunkering down in their homes and afraid. Meanwhile, though, in downtown Minneapolis, several thousand protesters blocked Interstate 94. And if you travel at all, you do a lot of driving, you know, you've probably been on 94, and that's really a super busy thoroughfare um, through there. And with that said, that's really uh, had caused uh, havoc, you know. Um, so besides the backlogs, you know, there, there was uh, some confrontations and things like that. It's just very, very questionable. Meanwhile, Oakland, California. And again, if you travel, you know, I think about Oakland at all. Oakland is typically pretty quiet. You know, it tends to be, uh, I don't want to say picturesque, but the people there tend to make a few dollars and there's not too much stuff that goes on. Well, that changed. Um, and they weren't spared the, the continuing saga of distaste of the results of the 2016 presidential election. No, as a matter of fact, some of the folks there were actually afraid for their safety. And you know, What's what's sad in a way here is that during the 9-11 terrorist attacks in New York, there were tens of thousands of people who found out firsthand what terror, fear, and unrelenting disapproval was all about. And this was done at the hands of radical terrorists. And as the details of the day from 9-11 were being broadcast to the world, People were dying, and people were trying to rescue others so they didn't die. A lot of police and firefighters would lose their lives that day while trying to save other folks. And the heroes who rushed in to help, they never asked about skin color. They didn't ask about religion or who you voted for. No, these people did the best they could to get people to safety, and to keep others alive. Former Mayor Rudolph Giuliani can attest to what is really important in life, being surrounded by burning death for days at the hands of pure evil is a true wake-up call. Giuliani recently referred to the protesters as spoiled crybabies, and that was in a Fox interview. So, here is my question to you, you, the American citizen. Shall we continue rioting in the streets? Should we continue beating up innocent people because of their voting preference? Well, then should we attack gays? Should we attack transgenders because they're different? And what about one ethnic group ganging up on another because they're too white? Maybe they're too black. Maybe they're too yellow. Or maybe their eyes look squinty. What do you think? Should we maybe stop for a moment to question our own inner dialogue? Perhaps invest some quality time into who you are? There appears to be some major things that I see most people ignoring. And, you know, I don't know if you've uh, looked at the socialist theories 
uh, that are being exposed, especially more and more in the last two years. And I don't know if you've given any thought to what communism might look like under the red, white, and blue. And is there room for anarchists in your daily life? Something to think about, isn't it? You know, there's a culture that exists at this very minute, whether you're reading this or whether you are, are listening to this. But that culture is hell-bent on killing 87% of the United States population. And the first to go, and this is coming from the mouths of these people that want to kill us, first to go are any and all those who are deemed homosexual. Next, all Jews, followed by the Catholics and the rest of those, and us, who are non-believers in what they hope to have is a new radical caliphate known as radical Islamic extremism. Now, I don't know about you, but just thinking about that scares the hell out of me, and I'm just thinking that you know, I wasn't a fan of President Obama, and anybody who knows me knows that. However, every time he did something good, I applauded him. Um, same with, with Bill Clinton and uh, the same with Jimmy Carter and on down the road. Because, you see, somebody has to be in charge. And in this particular case, it's it's Donald Trump. Whether you think he's qualified or not, or whether he is qualified and others just don't think so, is a moot point. You're not going to change it. You are not going to, to uh, you know, force the president to step down. You're not going to be able to impeach him. And all this craziness that's going on is taking away from what is very, very important, and that is to find out what the hell the, the extreme, crazy Islamist folks are doing to try to hurt us. Now, last week, there was a terror attack in London, not that far from Big Ben. They're out there, and these folks are committed to killing us. So, at the end of the day, you know, I sit and watch the TV shows. I have friends that have um, shows on YouTube that, that cover different things. They do a great job, actually. And I look at this, and I scratch my head, and I'm thinking, well, you know, why are you beating the hell out of each other over who's president and who isn't, who did what, who didn't do what, you know, what did Hillary do, what didn't she do? That's that's past. And particularly, I don't think we need to, to worry about Hillary Clinton. I don't think we need to go after her, um, whatever. Okay, what we do need to do is we have to make America safe. And let me leave you with this. And, and I mean this sincerely. I mean, I, I, I didn't do this or write this or talk about this uh, just to sound, you know, piffy, I guess. I have had this reoccurring thought since the election. If, if it were possible to somehow contact heaven and talk with the 3,000 souls that were lost on 9-11... I wonder, what would they think of our current events? What would they think of us? Moreover, I wonder what direction they might lead us in. Well, those are my thoughts. What are yours? You know, you can always get on the blog here at thespearsyspin.blogspot.com. And we'd love to hear from you. Keep it professional is all we ask. Um, that's all we ask. Thanks a lot, folks. And we will see you Tuesday right here on the Spiritsy Spin. Spirit.